The life, crimes, and execution of Ned Kelly make up one of the most well-known and controversial chapters in Australian history. Despite their outrageous crimes, or perhaps because of them, the infamous Kelly Gang has captured public imagination for over 140 years. Whether justified or not, they have become national folk heroes, and there are so many interesting aspects to the story. Today we're going to look at the story of how my great-great-grandfather Charles Nettleton took some of the most famous photos in Australian history, those of Ned Kelly the day before he was hanged. We're also heading for Melbourne, where we're going to explore how one of the most significant relics of Ned Kelly's execution has been lost in the old stonework of the city for almost a hundred years. The Old Melbourne Jail first opened way back in 1845, and over the next 79 years, this jail held and executed some of Australia's most notorious criminals, including the infamous bushranger, Ned Kelly. With the discovery of gold in Victoria, Melbourne's population boomed. Overcrowding in the jail became a huge problem so new cell blocks and boundary walls were progressively added over the next few decades. Melbourne grew wealthier and larger, and by the 1870s, the jail which had been constructed on the outskirts of town had become uncomfortably close. Eventually, it would have to go. Over almost eight decades of operation, the Melbourne Jail held more than 50,000 prisoners within its stone walls and executed over 130 criminals by hanging, the 101st of which was Ned Kelly. My great-great-grandfather Charles Nettleton was a police photographer. He took what is arguably the most recognised photo in Australian history, a photograph of Ned Kelly the day before he was hanged. This image has become an Australian icon. It is probably the country's most reproduced historical photograph. This photograph, and a full-length one, were taken at Ned's request before he died. The police did not normally take photos of prisoners who were to be hanged as photographs were expensive, and they usually only did it to help identify a prisoner if they got into trouble again. But since Victoria Police have one of the originals, it was likely them that paid for it. If it had been the photographer, he would have seen the commercial value in reproducing it, and there would be probably many more original copies still around today. During the wet plate process of the 1860s and 1870s, photographs had to be developed within a few minutes of being exposed. So Nettleton had a cell at the Melbourne jail fitted out as his own darkroom. There are only five genuine proven photos of Ned Kelly and police photographer Charles Nettleton took four of them. Now, Ned Kelly had been in trouble with the law since he was a young teenager, and in 1871, aged just 16, he was jailed for receiving a stolen horse. His admission form noted that he already had three family members in jail. It was during this stint in prison that Nettleton took the first two photos, 
One was taken in 1873 when Ned was 18 years old and another was taken on his release in 1874. Victoria Police did not photograph all of their prisoners. They limited their photographs to the worst of criminals. They clearly expected he was going to be troubled. And as we all know, they were right. Ned Kelly would go on to become Australia's most infamous bushranger. After his capture at Glen Rowan, Ned Kelly stood trial in Melbourne, where he was found guilty and sentenced to death. He was hanged in the Melbourne jail on the 11th of November, 1880. Prisoners that died in the jail were buried in the cemetery, but those that were executed were buried within the jail grounds. The grim idea being that even in death, they would never know freedom. Although the executed prisoners were placed in unmarked graves, in many cases, other prisoners carved the initials of the deceased into the stone wall where they were buried. These grave markers were the closest thing they got to call a headstone. After a long and eventful period of operation, the jail finally closed down in 1924 and was decommissioned five years later. The Melbourne jail had become the old Melbourne jail as we know it today. The yard was dug up and the bodies of many executed prisoners, including Ned Kelly, were reinterred in mass graves at Pentridge Prison. They were taken from one jail and placed in another. These executed prisoners would still never know freedom. There are some incredible Ned Kelly relics which can be viewed today, including his famous armour and a death mask which was made of his head after his execution. But what about his grave marker on the wall of the prison? One of those stones had his initials and an arrow carved into it. Well, the old Melbourne jail was partly demolished and they soon put the old stones to good use by the Public Works Department. So let's go take a look. It was depression years and the government was looking for projects for the unemployed. Through the Public Works Department, some of the stone from the old Melbourne jail was used to make seawalls between Brighton and Beau Morris. This section of bluestone wall at Brighton Beach contains the initials of six executed inmates. Felipe Castillo, John Wilson, Joseph Pfeffer, John Conda, Fata Chand, and William Colston. All were sentenced to hang for murder and executed at the Old Melbourne Jail. When we arrived at the beach, we found that the stone seawall is mostly buried by the sand, and at first it looked like there would be no hope of finding any grave markers. Now, we knew that one of the grave markers was partly obscured as it was placed in a corner which we assumed was the corner of the staircase shown in this old photo. However, when we arrived at Brighton Beach, there was no staircase to be found. It had been removed. When we noticed a section of wall which had been partly demolished, that gave us a clue on where to dig. Fortunately, we knew where to dig for this one. All the others have been covered by the sand, but this one, you can see the initial J, C for John Conda. He was a murderer and he was hung. And you can just see the start of the date to, the rest of it's a bit hard to see. But this is where the stairs were and knew exactly where this rock was. All the others are within 25 metres, but they're buried by the sand. As well as the six here, the grave markers of five others have been recorded in the stonework elsewhere at Brighton and nearby Beaumaris. 
but no one has ever found the grave marker of Ned Kelly. His initials marked his grave at the Old Melbourne Jail. And although it hasn't been identified here, there is every chance that his grave marker is hidden under the sand somewhere along this seawall at Brighton. So if you find yourself walking along some old bluestone around Brighton, keep your eyes peeled. You may just come across the lost grave marker of the infamous executed bushranger, Ned Kelly. <laughs>